Hi everyone and welcome to this video. My name is Claire, also known as Thrifty Mum, and today I'm going to show you how to make this really gorgeous boho hanging crochet lampshade. It's really inspired by macrame, but it is actually crochet. So if you stay with me, I'll show you exactly how to make it. So it looks quite complicated, but they're really only kind of basic crochet stitches that you do need to know, such as um, starting with a slip knot, chaining, working into the back loop, just a slip stitch simply, working into a chain space, and then um, a single crochet stitch, as well as a slip knot and slip stitch. So they're the basic crochet stitches that you're gonna need for this project. So the first thing you need is your thrifted lampshade. So here you can see that it uh, would have been quite nice <laughs> once. Um, I'm gonna turn it into something very different. I just got this at a local charity shop and I think I paid five pounds for this in the UK. Um, and just start off by cutting off the fabric and there's kind of like a lining underneath as well. So just start by taking it off um, ruthlessly with some scissors and cut all the way around. So we're nearly there now, okay, um, take the tag off as well. <laughs> There's the thing to be aware of is um, when you're looking for a lampshade in a shop or maybe you have one around, decide if you're using, if you're wanting to make a hanging, uh, like a pendant lampshade, which is what I'm making today, or one that's actually going to be on a base um, of a lamp. So just dependent on the shape of the lampshade that you, um, you're gonna use. And this one was actually really nice because it had the option to do both. So I'm gonna be hanging it from a pendant. So I needed it on this particular setting at the top. So here's the yarn that I was using for my particular project. Um, it really doesn't matter what you use, but it was a 100% acrylic yarn that I found in Hobbycraft in the UK and I really like it because it was super chunky. I love this kind of um, acrylic yarn because it really makes any project super quick, um, but also I just thought it looked really kind of hygge um, and, and boho at the same time, and I knew that it would literally probably take me like an hour or two hours to finish using this particular yarn. Um, it does say to use a 12 millimeter uh, crochet hook. I didn't actually have one of them handy. I've got one somewhere, but I'm sometimes very uh, impulsive and just want to start a project straight away. So I actually ended up using a six millimeter crochet hook, um, which was, you'll see, I do struggle a little bit sometimes to pull it through, but it kind of did the overall job. It just sometimes is a little bit tricky to pull through the full thickness of the yarn. So that's kind of where the 12 millimeter um, might have been better. So here's another example where I used a much thinner yarn. This was just a double knit in the UK, um, like an Aran in the US, I believe. And um, it just gives a, a much different finish. And I used a five millimeter hook for that one. So this one's quite a different uh, approach using a, a super chunky. So yeah, whatever you have, I'm sure it'll be fine. Um, and kind of just use the appropriate uh, crochet hook. So let's get started. So the first thing you do is create a slip knot on your crochet hook. And you're going to be starting from the bottom of the lampshade and this is the trickiest part really just the starting off and the foundation row just if you're really not used to doing this kind of thing so the foundation row is really just like a kind of chain row if you like but you're kind of chaining and almost like slip stitching around the metal bar on the lampshade and you can see that i kind of go from have the kind of yarn at the back of the lampshade um, and then I like come underneath with the crochet hook 
and here I'm just de deciding what I'm going to do with the, um, the tail. I think I end up leaving the tail and then I yeah come back to that later on. If you want to, you can obviously crochet over, over the uh, tail, but leave it for now if you like and I'll show you what I did with mine. So yeah, I'll just show you this again. So I kind of come underneath, I grab the yarn, I then yarn over, so I'm kind of yarning over the metal and then I pull through. So you go underneath, grab the yarn, yarn over the top and then pull through the loop and then pull through the second loop and then pull it really, really tight. So the aim is that you get all the stitches really close together so you can't see any of the metal bar. So you always have your yarn behind the metal bar, you get your crochet hook and you come underneath, grab the yarn from the back, pull it back towards the front, yarn over, pull through the first loop and then pull through the second loop. So it's kind of a bit like a slip stitch and you're kind of slip stitching around the metal bar. Here I just struggle a little bit sometimes with the smaller hook just to grab the whole thickness of the yarn but um, yeah it's fine I persevere with it so sometimes you can kind of be <laughs> you don't have to strictly follow the hook size of the yarn that it suggests depending on the project that you're doing. And so you're just going to continue that until you go all the way around the bottom of the frame. Here I'm just going to show you how you get around where there is a bar, uh, like a seam on the um, frame. So you just really do exactly the same thing. You keep the yarn at the back um, and then kind of pull it through to the front. And then it should just naturally hide the bar on the frame. And then you just, yeah, you carry on around the entire base of the frame. So I'll just continue to do that and then I'll just meet you just before I join at the at the end. So you'll remember the tail from the beginning that I didn't actually crochet over. You may have done, which is fine, but this is a really nifty little way of hiding the tail. So what I did was actually wrap it around the frame. It's actually still got a little bit of glue from the the shade, the original shade, which helps to kind of just hold it a little bit in place. So I wrap it all the way around and then I just do exactly the same thing. So I just keep crocheting around the frame and obviously around and over the top of that, um, that chair, uh, the tail. And that's just a simple way of doing it. So here we are literally at the end where we're just going to slip stitch to join. Um, what I did was just found the original, the first um, foundation stitch if you like and then I actually just slip stitched into I think I believe the back loop if you want to go into both of those um, loops that's fine you can. Um, the yarn was just super thick for me so I just went into the back loop and that is your first um, the chain foundation chain base done. Um, so remember that your yarn was always at the back. Now it's really handy to actually bring it to the front now from um, this point forward. So it's always in front of you and we're going to be starting to now um, work into the lampshade. 
So the first thing you want to do is really decide on the overall look that you want to achieve. And this is kind of a little bit of an experiment, if you like. So depending on, as I say, the thickness of the yarn, the thickness of the hook, the size of the lampshade, this may not be what you go for. Um, and the one that's in front of me on the floor, I actually chained three. But this one, I'm just playing around at the beginning, just deciding on what I actually want to have in terms of the um, the space. You can see my little daughter's feet just um, come into this, this screenshot here. So yeah, I have a play around with it and I did three chains for the chain space originally and then I decided actually it doesn't quite work with this size yarn, and this size um, lampshade. So what I did was actually chain five so this was going to be what my overall design was for this lampshade. So yeah, it's sometimes a little bit experimental depending on things, but you can just have a go and you can unpick it if you really do not like what you find. So what I did was I chain five, then I skip five of the stitches and then I um, slip stitched into the uh, just the back loop um, of the foundation row. And then that's kind of what the pattern is, really. It's really simple. So here I'm chaining five again, and this is basically creating a chain space. So if you've worked with chain spaces before, they're really simple. Maybe you've crocheted like a market bag, um, that kind of thing. It's the quite a very simple uh, pattern. So you chain five, move along, leave five, and then slip stitch into the back loop only of that first foundation um, uh, the foundation row and they are then creating these chain spaces and this is what you do all the way around the base so I'll just show you a few more times so chain five You can chain four if you want, if your gaps are a little bit too big, you decide. Again, like I say, if you're using a much thinner yarn, you might want to just chain three. And in that case, if you chain three, you just leave three spaces and then you, you know, um, go into the back loop, of, back loop of the third stitch. But here it's just the fifth stitch every time. And then pull through. And that's creating those chain spaces. Okay so here we have I've kind of completed the first round if you like and I'm just about to move into joining at the beginning so you're kind of just working around um, there is no sort of seam as such you just keep going from the next round to the next round and so on and when you get to the stage you simply chain five again and then rather than picking up the back loop on the foundation chain, you simply go into the next chain space, which is obviously the um, slightly higher up chain space. So we're now into kind of the second round, if you like. And you simply just go underneath, pull up the yarn, yarn over, pull through the first loop and pull through the second loop. So it's very similar to how we were crocheting on the first round around the metal bar but instead you're crocheting into those chain spaces and then you continue to do exactly the same thing chain five and then go into the next chain space you'll notice when i was moving from the first round to the second round it doesn't really matter how many spaces i had left i think i only had three left on the foundation row if you've got two or five uh, it doesn't really matter it's a very flexible pattern and overall when you come to finish it we'll see at the end it basically just falls into shape and the quirkiness is fun about it it isn't you know um, there is no really strict pattern certain rounds look slightly different um, and that's what I really like about it so just go with it if you feel that um, you need to add in a few more chains on that last row just to get you to the next chain space then you can do that it really doesn't matter if you had six or seven chains for example on that last stitch so just keep doing that um keep doing the five chains 
into the next chain space and so on and then I'll see you in a little while when we've worked up a number of rows. Okay, so now we can see the lampshade is starting to take shape. I've just continued to work around as I showed you. And so far I haven't done any decreases. We are going to start looking at doing some decreases very soon. But what you kind of want to do at the moment is just give your chain spaces like a little tug. Um, just so that everything's kind of you know, falling where it should be. So there is some movement in those chain spaces. They're not into a particular stitch, they're just in the chain space. So if you kind of give them a bit of a tug, they tend to kind of fall within the, mid the center of each of those chain spaces. So yeah, we're gonna continue on here. And then in a second, I'm going to show you how to do some decreases. So obviously at the moment, the base of the lampshade is slightly wider than it's going to start getting narrower. So we are going to need to do some decreases, but I haven't done any yet. Um, so we just continue in with the five chains and then going into the next chain space. So here I'm just tugging and realizing that I actually do need to do a decrease. Basically the reason is when you start to feel that it's getting a bit, maybe a bit baggy, a bit loose, you do want it to still be really tightly hugging the lampshade so that's kind of the reason why I decided to do the decrease so right here basically I um, instead of chaining the next into the next chain space during the chain five I actually just slip stitched into that next chain space so I did the usual grab the yarn pull it up pull it through the two loops and then basically I did exactly the same again. So as I say, when you're doing a decrease, the only part that you skip is the chain five. So you're really just wanting to bring two of those chain spaces together. And that's what I'm doing here. And you're actually removing one of the chain spaces as you go. And then when you pull it really tight, it all really like kind of pulls it really snugly. So there is no rule about when you need to do a decrease. They are really kind of sporadic in this pattern and I kind of show you that towards the end. I'll show you kind of where my decreases were. But basically the rule is whenever you feel that it's getting a little bit baggy and it's not necessarily hugging the frame, that's when you should do a decrease. Um, I think on this part of the lampshade there was probably around two decreases and then as we slightly went up higher to the narrow part of the top there were maybe about three but nothing more than that uh, each round so to do a decrease just again just to talk you through it you basically rather than doing those five chains you just go into the next chain space then do your slip stitch so you obviously pull through the yarn and pull through the two loops rather than chaining at that stage you literally then go into the next chain space do the same so yarn underneath pull the yarn through through the two loops and pull everything really tightly and that way you will have reduced one of those chain spaces and then just continue as normal So here I'm just kind of showing you where I did the decrease. So you see here where I'm just poking my finger in. That was the kind of chain space that we've now closed and it's hugging it really nicely and tightly now. So we just continue on round and I'll show you where I do the next decrease. Okay, so just showing you here um, that I continued on. Um, just showing you where the, the first decrease was and then I'm just about to do another one, so I just thought I'd show you that again. 
So I kind of did the decrease where I just showed you and then I went on to do um, five or six chain spaces. I've just decided here that it's starting to get a little bit loose again. So I just did my chain five and then did my slip stitch as normal. And then you're going to see now, instead of doing another chain five, I'm basically just gonna pull everything tight and then I'm gonna go straight into the next chain space without doing any chains. So I'm just gonna go in, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through the loops, pull everything really tight, and then that's it. That's another decrease done. So then I'll do, you can just show you there in the little hole that I've created, that I've closed that chain space. And then it's just really holding it nice and tight now, just double checking that. So here there was kind of a decrease on one side of the lamp and then it kind of worked out that the next decrease was on the other half, the other side of the lamp. And then I just continue as normal back to doing the chain five and continue as normal. So here I'm really just showing you that actually you've made more progress than you realise because actually when you pull the stitches really quite tight, um, I'm about three quarters of the way, maybe a little bit more than that. I haven't actually got that many rows more to go, maybe two more rows. So yeah, you might want to start to just have a bit of a tug on your work at this stage. Just to kind of see kind of how tight you want it to be and then you really will realize this is such a quick and easy project. This is literally taking me less than an hour so far. So just keep going and keep doing decreases where you feel you need to. You may start to need to do a few more at this stage just because it's getting quite narrow. Um, and then here I'm really am tugging, after I've done another row, I'm kind of realizing that I'm really not far um, to kind of finishing the project now. So I'll be showing you that section in a minute. But yeah, just see how you go in terms of these decreases. If you feel that you need to just go back and unpick and make it a little bit tighter and include some more decreases, then you can do that. So yeah, I'm really close to completing this now. So I'm just pulling it up and deciding, actually, it looks fine. I'm just showing you where those decreases were. You can see that they're kind of random and sporadic doesn't really matter the overall effect is still really cool there is no you know right or wrong place for a decrease as long as it's hugging the lampshade so yeah you can see some of mine ended up being quite close together which really didn't matter in the end so okay so here we go uh, on to the final round so I just actually chained one after finishing um, the previous row just to keep everything really nice and tight and then we're basically going back to how we started and we're crocheting back around the top bar now of the lampshade. So you're going into those chain spaces. Um, just be aware of where your bars are. So make sure you do enough stitches kind of either side of the bar. So go underneath, grab the yarn like we did before, pull up a loop and go through the loops, keeping everything really tight. And in the chain space, just again looking where that bar is. And then I did another, you wanna keep your stitches really, really tight together. So I did three there quite close together, pulled up. And then what I decided here was actually, I needed to go into the stitches rather than just going into the next chain space. What you really need to do is then go into the middle of that stitch that I'm just showing you there just so that it'll kind of pull up the whole of your work so there won't be a kind of a hole there and a gap. So just go into your work and do the, exactly the same thing. Pull up the yarn, a yarn over and pull up the loop. Um, 
and then we're back into the chain space again here we've now gone across the bar and continue on so again keep your yarn behind you like you did on the first round the foundation round pull underneath pull the yarn through yarn over and pull across so it's exactly the same as what we were doing on the first round it's really um, really nice at this stage to know that you're really quite close to finishing so just keep everything really tight just pull up everything so it stretches really nicely and just continue to do that and in each chain space again there's no rule about how many stitches it just it's kind of how it looks how it feels I think I was doing around three or maybe four depending on how it was kind of stretching and also depending on where those bars were falling and then each time I would go into those stitches and um, as well as the chain spaces. Okay, so ready to uh, finish now, but I just kind of wanted to show you how mine looked at the top. And again, just to highlight the importance of going into those stitches as well. So I'm just showing you how nice and tight that ended up being when I actually crocheted in to those stitches as well as the chain spaces and also here just the fact that some of my chain spaces had more stitches in so that one I think has got four whereas this one here has only got three so it really depends on you know where it falls in terms of those bars as long as it all looks really nice and tight then don't worry about it too much And to finish off, just slip stitch into that first stitch of that row. I just went into the back loop again, just because it's really tight to get through both of those um, loops. But you know, you can do whatever you want to do. But um, just finish off, slip stitch, and then pull through. Um, obviously, cut off if you've got any remaining yarn. I still had a little bit of wool left from just my one ball which was really good and it was one ball that cost me about £6.50 from Hobbycraft so really inexpensive and really quick and easy project and then just weave in your ends how you normally do if you do that with a needle that's fine I just tend to kind of pull it through a few times with my crochet hook and tie off so I'll just show you how I do that now And there we have it, the finished product. It really didn't take very long at all. And then I've actually crocheted um, my cord as well. So see my other video if you'd like to know how to do this. And then I hung it up above a really nice uh, drinks unit. I also showed you how, how you can drape it over like a curtain rail. So basically anywhere you want to hang this on a hook, maybe if you don't want to have like a, a standard lamp, you just want to hang it over some bookshelves, it's just so cool, it's so versatile, you can literally move it around any way you want 
um, just to show you as well because my lampshade was able to be put onto a lampshade just show you what it looks like on a lampshade as well so it's just really cute really kind of I think bang on trend at the moment with the boho look and just really cozy and so inexpensive um, this costs just over £10 so thanks for watching and really good luck with your project and really hope that you're able to achieve a similar uh, look and subscribe for more videos thanks very much bye